All right, this is Mark Farrar with Not Square Design, and um, do both residential and commercial design here in Butte, Montana. Um, do work throughout the state, actually Washington, Oregon. Um, most of my experience is actually from 25 years spent in Arizona during the housing boom. So, um, what we're going to do today is work again on Osberg. So this will be lesson six of Osberg. And um, if you guys want to follow along, um, then you can go to the Osberg playlist. And um, there's two playlists. There's one that's just for the client, and that's not the one you're after. Um, so um, there are two Os names with Osberg in them, and it, it's pretty obvious. The longer one, I don't remember right at the moment, but um, today we're gonna we're gonna add the slab on grade in the section and showing the client a 312 lower roof uh, plus um, a 44 inch clear opening of egress windows from finished floor. And so um, this is a requirement of code um, for our egress windows. And there is an upstairs with bedrooms in it, so we'll need egress. And the wraparound porch um, can uh, disrupt windows from below where it intersects the wall. So. We want to make sure we always have that 44 inches of clear opening. That's really important. It's not the bottom of the window frame, but actually where when you've got it open, that there's you can put your arm through and reach outside. So um, all these lessons for the Osberg plan are compatible with AutoCAD Lite because we're doing the whole plan in 2D. And to start, we will add the four inch thick slab and show it turned down until I get uh, frost depth back from the building department for the area. So I'm um, not too concerned about um, doing too much detail on the footings for the main building because I don't have information I put on email yesterday. So hopefully I have something next week. Um, from there, we can add trusses in section AA and drop and add an exterior patio two inches down from the finished floor on AA and BB. And then I would typically mirror the patio of roof B, B around to the other side. But in this case, um, I have a 512 pitch on the main roof. I did a 512 pitch on that right-hand side of BB. And so we're going to do a 312 pitch because um, they showed me some conceptual pictures that um, it was lower pitched for the wraparound porch. So I'm going to give that on the left side. So they've got an option. So we're just going to do a 312 pitch over there. I've already ran through um, some beam check software, which is a really cool way to do some pretty simple stuff. But um, um, got uh, a 2 by 10 dug for number 2 when I use a repetitive use member. And um, the repetitive use of you know, multiple rafters, rafters at 24 inches on center um, increases the size over just doing one single span of a member. And um, in lesson seven, I thought I'd go over that. So I'll go over using the beam check software and we'll size a simple span rafter and show you how that runs out to be a two by six. And um, so, um, but that's just a simple span um, as a non-repetitive use. And so when I add the repetitive use for this area, um, which is 35 pounds of snow load, um, that's our live load. And um, so in the 2021, they limit out at 20 pounds. Um, 2018 used to go higher, but they jumped from 30 to 40. And so um, doing 35, you might be, you know, you actually were skipping 35. So the, the uh, possibility of increasing member size unnecessarily and then therefore increasing construction costs, that was very viable as something that might happen. And so, you know, the, the, the opinion of myself, what I do here is a lot of sizing and, um, and or sending out to structural engineer and having it sized um, so that, you know, maybe the plan cost is higher, but 
the construction cost is so much lower that it not only makes up for that cost, but can actually, in many cases, completely pay for a set of plans. So um, with this working drawing, we will start. Let's see. We were going to add that four inch thick slab, which I kind of had going here, but I don't have the drop. And in snow areas, even with a nice cover, um, it could be nice to drop this down. And maybe they'll come back and say, hey, we don't want it dropped down that much. Let's just drop it one inch or even half an inch or something of that nature. But I'm going to drop it a full two inches for now. So right now I'm just going to offset four. Oh, I got to get on my drawing. And let's just make sure I didn't. I sure hope I don't mess up this video. Um, if anybody out there has a tip for me on OBS Studio, please drop it in my comments or email me directly at mark at Naughty Studios, which is K-N-O-T-T-Y-S-T-U-D-I-O-S dot com, um, even though my, my website is dot U-S. But uh, Mark is M-A-R-K. K-N-O-T-T-Y-S-T-U-D-I-O-S. I'm trying to figure out if I don't click into my AutoCAD and I hit my space bar again thinking I'm in AutoCAD, then I may not notice that I just paused my recording. It just does whatever the last thing that was done. It does it again. And um, I don't want to be messing up my recordings because I don't have time to edit so or review them, honestly. Um, so let's go back to this. We're going to offset four, drop that down, then I'm going to move this guy. And we're going to move the whole thing, because um, I already kind of did this one. So move it down two, and then we would, you know, take and um, just line this out to, to where it would go. In this case, I'm going to have a, an offset here, so I'm going to go line here to here to here, and then I'm going to go line to here. And the reason I want those two separate is because they're different line weights. So that is that. In fact, the bottom of this guy will be white too. And as far as that goes, a good portion of this part would be too. Because um, where the magenta is, is what kind of goes off into infinity or at least four feet. There's no object for four feet behind that line. I'm going to kill that line. Although, I think undo. Let's look at that. D. I think this is the 44-inch line from finished floor. 3 foot 8. Yeah, 44 inches. So you can see I've got enough room for flashing and still be able to get some trim and stuff in there. Not a lot of room, but some room. And dropping that 2 inches probably helped a little bit. But on the other side, um, we can go ahead. Let's just get rid of this line. And then mirror this around, take that with it, um, and let's grab that, and let's mirror it around the center line. I do like, it's really handy to have a center line if you're doing a lot of mirroring or work on a project. Oh, here we're going to have a footing and stuff, so we don't know what that depth is yet. Um, I can pretty much count on the fact that it's going to be a um, regular 8-inch wall, so what I'll probably do is um, if I were to offset eight inches here and then just extend this over and then trim this down, then it's starting to show, like if I do a line, just make it something kind of up at an angle or something that tells yourself, hey, I haven't finished this yet. Grab your attention later. Um, now, where do I want this to start? Well, I would like it to be eight feet. So that's eight, eight. If we can get a higher, great. Um, especially with this lower pitch, I don't think I'm gonna have any issues. So let's come right off of this. Let's see, if I were to put set my beam 
any beam that goes back to the house on top of this double top plate, then this is a great location to put that into. So let's start here, XL, H. And this is about eight feet. Now these people have some terrific views. So one question I have out, out for them is from the standard five foot six high, eye height um, worldwide, then that view is gonna be about this angle and is that going to be enough to get to those? And I think it will be to get to the mountains off in the distance because they are really beautiful up there. So here I'm going to take and uh, do XL vertical and find my roof where it ends. Could have mirrored that point around, but we're going to kind of do this from scratch. So let's trim this down as if that's where my my beam was going to sit. And I don't really have a beam size for this yet. Maybe um, we'll show that as another beam check lesson because that beam will matter more. And of course, um, my snow load standards, um, if I go down, let's see if I can do this without giving things up. Um, I might not be able to. Okay, I, I was able to, so I blanked out the county. Uh, I've got an elevation of 3232 above sea level. And so using the MSU, Montana State University's ground snow load calculator, um, it's 35 pounds per square foot. So um, you can go to my website and get that snow load calculator out of the design criteria. So. Um, so with that being said, we're going to fake one in here, and we can move it pretty easily once we've got something done. So REC, and let's just um, come in out, REC. And oh, I'm still in trim here. And let's just say that we get, oh, I don't know, six by eight as a beam, and so it may be bigger than that. Um, so let's go with six by 10 for right now. So that's gonna be 5.5 comma, and then I'm at 9.25 for my width. Now that guy, um, I wanna turn it white because we're gonna be cutting through it, and that's D object. Remember, all our stuff in, is in the D layers, the, the object layers. In fact, we can switch to our drawing tools for sections, and that's all the drawing layers I'll have. And I can show this as a beam right now. I'm, since I don't have it sized right, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, what I do have sized is the member that comes off of it. And so we're going to do a full bird's mouth on this member, and we're going to go at a 312. So my line is here, back 12 up three, and then just back to where I began. We can get rid of that now, unless they do an enclosed soffit. And let's just get this guy nice and warm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this from here to itself, and then just trim it out of there. And I've got my bird's mouth. Um, I already predetermined the size. Offset 9.25 as two by tens for these rafters. Extend that out. And then let's just bring it back. I'm just going to bring it back to my siding for now, for the purposes of this, this video. Try not to keep, get, get, let things get too, too long. And so I'll just chamfer those with the chamfer value of zero. Now, <clears throat> I'll tell you right now that um, let's just check this length. So if I were to, if I were to draw a line out, and then I do a dimension here, that's um, over six inches. So we're probably looking at a two by eight fascia. That's not unreasonable. So um, what I can do is uh, let's switch layers because when I insert blocks, sometimes it's hard to tell that you accidentally inserted it onto your junk layer unless you create your block on the zero layer. And then you'll get some properties that'll turn out to be of the layer itself. So that's one trick, is to create your 
your blocks in zero zero layer. So we'll just go block. I'm gonna go to my let's see what's in here. Nothing. Current. There we go. There's a two by six. I'm looking for a two by eight. So we're close, but I don't have it here. So I'm gonna then go to my library and then we will just zip on out to our blocks, uh, structural blocks. I'm looking for dimensional lumber. I want a two by 10, no, two by eight, two by eight vertical, because I want that seven and a quarter inches. And I don't know why this doing this. This is probably a setting wrong in my AutoCAD. I gotta fix that once I figure it out. Now I'm gonna move this down and I want my, yeah, I want my plywood to go over it. Let's set it there. That brings it down further than I was in this line, but it's about as close as we're gonna get. So um, if we take this line, we can move it, we could have deleted it, recreated it, but I'm just moving it and then I'm gonna trim it back. And you can get rid of this now because what it's gonna do, actually undo, undo, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that one. And then this one, I can trim back to here because these two are off in the distance forever. So we're gonna switch them to the D object dark layer. Dark being a thick line. And then, how are we gonna sheet it? Well, do we wanna see tongue and groove underneath? Or are they gonna do flat? I don't really know yet. Um, so let's just assume tongue and groove for right now, 0.75 for a three quarter inch TMG be able to look up at those. Um, we would be looking up at rafters as well. So maybe want to pick some nice stuff out. I can leave that hanging long, put my drip edge on it. Um, or if they're going to gutter it, I might trim that back and gutter it. So let's just assume a gutter for right now. And then I've got a roof on top and where they're using an afterfall shingle. But what I like to do is just do a one inch offset if I don't get some sort of distance off there, when I try to um, plot these, my lines just turn into a big blob. Um, so this line, I'm gonna take it to D object thin. So it turns out as a really thin light line and then I'm gonna match that to that infinite layer. So we've got this guy drawn now at a 312. So I can copy that, bring it over here and then we can mirror it and my mirror should be turned on correctly I've got two layers going on here see my color change there we go so let's fix this too I want these to stay on that structural layer so yeah that's true tags so MA fix that now this one we're gonna just grab this guy Grab it by that little notch, bring it up two, and then um, change this into a three. And there we go. And I'm not gonna worry about centering that because when they get this small, they don't make a whole lot of sense to be exactly fixed to it. So that's a 312. I'm gonna just make sure that they know that this one over on this side is a five. Now, there's the two differences. You can see the height difference. That's about where that one's hitting. This one's much lower. So I'm gonna have more room for any snow buildup or anything, but I do do two foot overhangs and that overhang is from the actual real finished edge back. So this is has still an inch and three quarter to build out from my siding. And that's assuming that we have an actual inch of siding. So, um, kind of follows suit that whatever I'm putting here, I'll probably put something similar out here to finish this off, unless it is just a, a wood end finish, which with an asphalt shingle will probably be the case. But uh, I do need to find out a little bit more about whether we're putting gutters on and that sort of thing. So real quick, I need to go back to my notes to see what else we're covering in this. So we did the 40, Two, and then we built that roof um, 
42. I'm saying something that doesn't make sense probably to anyone. Um, the standard um, frost depth where I live is 42 inches. I don't know where the frost level depth is here. This is much higher or lower in altitude. So um, we're going to find that out. But that is where we at, 20 minutes. So not bad. Um, did I cover everything? I'm going to check real quick and then say my goodbyes if I got it all. Okay, so just as a final point here, um, if they decide to enclose this off it, I'll just uh, suggest using stub trusses as an option so they don't have to also make a horizontal member. So this 2x6 dug for number two was a single use. Um, the way that all this works out, I'm getting great numbers in here. Um, although my sectional is at 100%. It passed, but that is as close as it gets. I don't like that number at all. So I would bump this automatically up to a 2 by 8 and we'll run through that when we go through that. But here's what we actually used. This was the 2 by 10 It's a repetitive use, so you can see it's set to be 24 inches on center, even though um, this one doesn't say that. Um, so my selection here is a repetitive use rafter and so what it came out to gave me ratios that were i like it this to be under 90 um or 90 or less let's put it that way and all these numbers really and um so what this is telling me is that um you know in in my total deflection my live load deflection i'm in really good shape um point zero one of an inch point zero eight of an inch for just the live load but so if i get the worst case scenario of material plus the snow i'm gonna flex just point zero one so we'll go through that and how we came up with that in lesson number seven because this is the end of number six so again this is mark farrar with not square design and See you on the next video. Thank you.